more white man not. to interrupt what God is doing. Right That's right. Give me the book of James 1 and 26. Read. The book of James, chapter 1 and 26. If any man among you seem to be religious. So, the scripture just said, brothers, if any man among us that seem to be religious seem to know what he's talking about. Read. And bridleth not his tongue, but can't shut his mouth because he's full of emotions. Read. But deceive his own heart. Deceive his own heart. Because he thinks he's wise when he can go, you know what, just give me a scripture. And that's going to pertain to what you're talking about. Read it again from the top. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 26. I want you brothers to understand what's going on. This is spiritual. This is not carnal, meaning this is not physical. We're doing thus saith the Lord. We are speaking the oracles of God. Read. If any man among you seem to be religious, he said he believes. Right, right? right Read. Here. And bridle is not his tongue. And bridle is not his tongue. Now, what is he doing right now? He's trying to put the spotlight on himself because he wants to be seen. His feelings were hurt, right? And now he can't shut his mouth. Read. But deceiving his own heart. He's deceiving his own heart because he thinks he's wise. He believes that he has the wisdom in 1 Corinthians 2 6. Like you have. Like you have. This man's religion. This man's what? This man's religion. This man right here. His what? Is vain. Is what? Is Bro. vain. His religion is vain. That's right. Of no profit. Now let's find out what the true wisdom of Deuteronomy 4. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 2 6 is. Give me Deuteronomy 4 5. This is the wisdom, brothers. And this is what the officer was trying to impart into you. This is what God is trying to get uh, through to our people, the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 5. Uh huh. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. So, brothers, this is our heritage. Remember when I asked you the question, what was your nationality? The reason why I always start off with that question is because we have a heritage. Our heritage is God's laws. Our heritage is Israel. I want you to read that again from the top. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 5. Uh -huh. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Read. That ye shall do in the land 
whether ye go to possess it. Read on. Keep them forth and do them. Keep them forth and do them, meaning keep God's commandments, brothers. Why should we keep God's commandments? Because what? For this is your wisdom. This is your what? For this is your wisdom. This is our wisdom. When the brother asked me to explain the scripture, this is what wisdom of this Bible is keeping God's commandments. Hey, that's how you get the understanding of the Bible. That's why he thinks he has knowledge right now. Because he goes to Webster's Dictionary and looks up wisdom. And he reads it. But we just read that keeping God's laws is wisdom. That's right. Psalms 111 and 10. This is how we get the correct understanding of the Bible. We're not out here. We're not the Christian church, if you haven't noticed, right? We go to the Bible for every answer. We go to the Bible for every dialogue. We will not deal with the foolishness of man. That's right. Understand that. Understand what God is saying today. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is what? It's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of wisdom. This man has no fear. That's right. This man has no fear. Wow. wow. Because wisdom is keeping God's laws, right? Right. You must fear the Most High God of Israel to bow down, That's to be right. humble, to up. hearken to his commandments, correct? Think about this, brothers. Think about when you were growing up. Think about when your dad or your mother told you to do something, right? Why did you do it, bro? You were scared of the consequences. That's right. You were scared of the consequences, bro. What is that in Psalms 119, Spirit of His Judgments? Who has that? I'm 119, I'm 120. Look at that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. All right, so brother, I want you to pay attention to this because you said the reason why you listen to your parents, why? Because you were scared of the consequences. So this is the same reason why we would listen to God or keep his commandments. Same reason. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. Uh -huh. My flesh trembling for fear of thee. And I am afraid of thy judgment. We are afraid of God's judgments. Why are we afraid of God's judgments? Give me that in Isaiah 45, 7. Why are we afraid of God's judgments? Y'all got to understand. Why are our men getting gunned down in the streets? Do y'all think that that's just a coincidence? That all, uh, so many males throughout the whole year, over 50, have been gunned down by police? Y'all don't think that's by coincidence? Or do you think the Most High is behind that? Think about it. Didn't the Most High God create the heaven and earth? Didn't he do all of these things? Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 7. Uh -huh. I formed the light. The Most High God formed the light in the creation. We know that, right? Read. And create darkness. Uh-huh. I make peace. He makes peace and? And create evil. And he does what? And create evil. He does what things? Read. I, the Lord, do all these things. God does it all. God does all of these things. Right. So go back to Psalms 111 and 10. That's why you should do what? You should fear him. Because the most high God of Israel is nobody to be messed with. That's right. Understand that, brothers. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do it. First, you got to fear God, right? To hearken to his words. Keep his commandments. And then he'll give you the understanding of the Bible. That's right. right. All right? The reason why I got I had to make an example to the scriptures of the brother so he does not disrupt what God is trying to tell you brothers right today. Up. So, do you know your nationality already brothers? What's your nationality? Oh, you don't know your nationality. Think about what you just said. You said African and American. Which one are you? That's two. That's two. Which one are you? You're an American? How could you be? Weren't you brought over here in slave ships? Bring it up! Think about it. I'm coming back. What's your name, brother? John. John. What? Okay, you're on. What is your nationality? Let's go, brother. I guess I don't have your You don't. I like his answer. Why do I like his answer? You tell me. Because, yeah, because you were told by who that you were an African. Who told you that? What color were they? I need to have him over here. Caucasian people. Right, right, right. Now you're remembering, right? Who taught us how to read and write? Who taught us Christianity? Right? You're remembering those things. Right? Give me that in Isaiah 1 and 3. The book of Isaiah, 
chapter 1, verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox know of his owner. This is what God is telling us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He's saying that the ox knoweth his owner, read. And the ass, his master's crib. And the ass, his master's crib. Meaning, an ox is what? Livestock or cattle, right? And an ass is what? A donkey. So think about their uh, mental co uh, their mental complex or their IQs compared to a human. Think about that. Now let's, let's listen to what God is preparing the Israelite man and woman to. Read it again from the top. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox know of his owner. So he says an ox knows his owner, meaning when he sees his master or his, or his herder, right, he recognizes him, right? Because that's the man that feeds him, that gives him shelter, that gives him good grass so he can feed on, right? Read. And the ass, his master's crib. And the ass, his master's crib, the donkey, he knows where he lives. If he gets dropped off, say his, his home is FSU, he gets dropped off at FAMU, he can find his way back. He knows where he comes from. He knows where he lives. Right. But, he says what? But Israel. But the Israelites. Does not know. We don't know who supplies us. We don't know where our homeland is. Read it all the way through. The book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. Uh -huh. The ox knows his owner. Read. And the ass his master's crib. Read on. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. That's the key part. We don't consider. We stop. We say African American. Black. American. I don't know. For one, not one moment. Israelite. We don't say that. We don't consider that we could be the greatest people on the face of the earth. Right. You understand that? All right. So, I want you to look on this side. Where you at? Judah. Tribe of Judah. Tribe of Judah. You know that Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah? You didn't know that, did you? Give me Hebrews 7 14. This is what? You're relearning, you're relearning your heritage right now of who you are. You come from the greatest line of people to ever walk the face of the earth. Bro. That's right. You got to understand that thing. Jesus the Christ, ain't he the most famous person on the face of the earth? Everybody knows who that is, right? They just don't recognize him. Right. Who's that? That's Jesus. How you know? The person before you tell me. Right. But before that, would you know who that was? No, nah, you wouldn't. But you would have known who this man is. You would have known who that is, because that's who they betray him to be. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. Uh-huh. For it is evident. It's obvious. Read. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. Brother, what we're talking about right now, we're showing what tribe Jesus Christ came from. Y'all know who Jesus Christ is, right? You know who Jesus Christ is, brother? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Read again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. Uh huh. For it is evident. It's obvious, read. That our Lord sprang out of Judah. It's obvious that our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, came from which tribe? Judah. Judah. Yes. You just learned that you're from what tribe? Judah. Jeremiah 14, 2. Bring it up. Let's find out what the Bring Judahites look like. We need to know because we've been taught that Jesus Christ is this imposter. We need to learn and realize. What God is telling us. Right. Right. It's identity theft. They stole our history. Right. Bring it up. They stole our heritage. They stole our nationality. Yes, bring it up. Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Read. Judah morning. Who? Judah morning. Judah. The tribe of Judah morning. Read. And the gates thereof language. Our leaders are slack. The gates are referring to the leaders of Israel. Right. Even at that time, during the Babylonian captivity, our leaders failed us. Think about present time to the daughter of Babylon, right. America. Our leaders failed us. Barack did nothing except pass gay marriage. Jesse Jackson has not, a, has not done a damn thing. Al Sharpton only pops up when one of our people gets gunned down. Right. Think about it. Read it again from the top. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Read. Judah, morning. Uh-huh. And the gates thereof, length. What color are they? They are black unto the ground. Read that again. They are black unto the ground. The Judites, the tribe of Judah is black. That's right. Unto the ground, unto the soil. That's our skin complexion. Right. You have dark shades like these three brothers. You got lighter shades. We are black unto the ground. Give me Psalms 119, 111. Bring it out. Dealing with our heritage. Dealing with our heritage. Let me look at it real quick. What you got? Yes, that's what I want. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, 
verse 111. Uh -huh. Thy testimonies have I taken as inheritance. As in what? As inheritance. So the scripture saying right here, thy testimonies have I taken as inheritance. What's inheritance, bro? What you, I like it. He said inheritance is what you inherit from your ancestors, right? Brother right here. What, could you name some of the things that come along with our heritage as black people? What uh, things come to mind? Family. Family. Um, Christianity. Christianity. Um, folk songs, like slave songs. Slave songs. Um, and just the willingness to probably like work in the fields kind of, because we're good with, with our hands. I love his answer. I love, what's your name, brother? Calvin. Calvin, my name's Matt Athias. The reason why I love his answer is because he just fulfilled biblical prophecy. And I'm gonna show you how. Give me Jeremiah 17 and four. Bring it up! Because I just asked him what our heritage was. He said family, Christianity, slavery, folk songs, right? That's what he just said. But that only goes back 400 years. What about before that? You see that? Bring it up! Watch what the Bible, watch what God is telling you young men today. Watch this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. Because of our sins, this is what God did to us. Read. And thou, even thyself, you Israelites, even you, read, shall discontinue. Shall do what? Shall discontinue. From what? From thine heritage. From thy what? From thine heritage. That's why he can only think back the last 300, 400 years. Because we bis didn't discontinue from our heritage. How did we do it? How did that happen? Give me Micah 2 and 1. Bring it Watch up. this. Bring it up. Give me Micah 2 and 1. How will we discontinue from our heritage? Wait, what's the verse? What's the verse? Micah 2, 1. 2 verse 1. Let me see if I want to start lower. Let me see. That's it. Micah 2 and 1. The book of Micah. Now before I reveal who this man is, I'm going to ask y'all first, just to see if you have enough discernment to realize what God is telling you. Read this. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh-huh. Woe to them that devise iniquity. It says, woe to them that devise iniquity. Another word for iniquity is sin. Okay? Read. And work evil upon their bed. And work evil upon their beds. Read on. When the morning is light. Read. They practice it because... It is in the power of their hand. So it says, when the morning's like, when they wake up in the morning, they practice these wicked plots, right. these wicked devices, because the power of the world is in their hands. Read. And they covet fields and take them by violence. Read that part again. And they covet fields and take them by violence. Do you all know what it means to covet? What does that mean? It means to take without permission. Yeah, it means to, yes, take without permission to want something that's not yours. It says they covet fields, right? So they see a land that's not theirs, right? And they take it by what? By violence. Who is that? Who in history has a track record of stealing lands that is not theirs? Who? Our oppressor. Our oppressor. Who is our oppressor? The white man. The white man. The, no, the reason why you can say that, right, is because God has turned up the heat on his people. I bet you two years ago, he wouldn't have seen that. And you're asking, like, why is he saying it like that? Check this out. Give me Hosea 5.15. I'm going to, I want you to come right back. Come right back to Michael. Hold it. Hosea 5.15. Now, bro, the reason why I'm saying that is because two years ago, were our men getting gunned down at the rate they're getting gunned down now by police? No. No, we, they weren't. But now, since God has turned up the heat on his people, we're starting to say, you know what? I'm not an American. When my brother came up, he said African-Americans. You know what? No, African. I ain't no American. Why? Because he realized America's not for us. That's right. They're not our people. Watch what God is saying to you. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Uh -huh. I will go and return to my place. The Most High God of Israel is saying this to us. He's saying, you know what? Because of your sins, because of your iniquity, I will go and return to my place. Read. Till they acknowledge their offense. Until we do what? Acknowledge their offense. Until we acknowledge what we are doing is wrong. Turning up in the club tonight on the Sabbath day. Right. 
whoring out your sisters, men selling dope to each other, us robbing each other, killing each other, not marrying our sisters. It says until we acknowledge what we have done is wrong. Read and seek my faith and return unto God. Read in their affliction they will seek me early. Read that part again. In their affliction they will seek me early. Are we not being afflicted, brothers? Be honest. Are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans not being afflicted? Yes, we are the ones being oppressed. That's right. What other nation is the white man going through what we go through? Nope. Hell no. Is the Arab going through what we go through? Bring no, because he got a gas station on every damn corner. Right. Am I lying? Does the Chinese man go through what we go through? Nope. No. It's the Israelites. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans right. who are being oppressed. Bring it right. Understand what God is trying to tell you. Go back to Micah 2 and 2 real quick. Read that. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh-huh. And they covet fields and take them by fire. So now we know who that is, brothers, right? We know that the man who covets fields and takes them by violence is the white man. Right. So we have identified what God is trying to tell us. Read on. And houses and take them away. And they not only do they take them by violence, they take them from you. They move you out. They move you out of your neighborhoods so they can build stadiums, so they can build new developments for their people. Read. So they oppress a man and his house. Even a man and his heritage. Even a man and his what? And his heritage. Isn't that so key? It says even they oppress a man and his heritage. Read that again. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. And they come and field and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house. Even a man and his heritage. Even a man and his heritage. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Now, give me um, Habakkuk 1 4. Bring it out! Habakkuk 1 4. Because out of all of these murders, right, as justice happened for our people, they kill us in the streets and they walk away free. This is Bible prophecy. It's time you wake up and come out of these wicked churches. Right, because your pastors are teaching you lies. That's right. Thus saith the Lord. Have your pastor ever taught you that Christ was a black man? All right. Has your pastor ever taught you that the Israelites are the chosen people? No. Has your pastor ever taught you that you must keep God's commandments to make it to the kingdom of heaven? Why aren't you keeping them? You're not. That's called an excuse. I want you to take a look. I'm not saying that to tear down your spirit. I'm telling that to be real with you because I have love for my people. That's right. Understand what I'm saying to you, brother. I want you to look at him. Look at this brother. Look at this brother. Look at that brother. Give me the book of Numbers 1538. Come back. It's very easy. The reason why I know he has not taught you is because he did not teach you by action. He told you one thing because you did not know the proper understanding of what God's word is saying. He taught you you got to keep commandments, but you don't know commandment one. Understand that. Watch what God is saying. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel. And that's what we're doing right now. We're speaking unto the Israelites. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So God told us to do something. When God tells you to do something, it's called a commandment. That's a commandment. He told us to do what? Make what? Fringes in the borders of their garment. Fringes in the borders of our garment. Not only should we have fringes, we should have what on it? Throughout their generation. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. Do you see that? Is that hard to do? It's not hard. Right? So your pastor, I know your pastor don't wear fringes in the border of blue. So he's what? Give me 1 John 2 and 4. Bring it out. This is Christianity in a nutshell in this scripture right here. Christianity will tell you to keep the law and they don't keep commandment 1. That makes them a liar. Right. Thus saith the Lord. Read. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 4. Uh -huh. He that says, I know him. So 
I know your pastor say he knows God. He has a personal relationship with God. Oh, I love God. Thank you, Jesus. How about all that foolishness? Read it again from the top. He that says, I know him. Read. And keepeth not his commandments. And do what? And keepeth not his commandments. Start at verse 3. The book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. So that's the Israelites. The Israelites know God because why? We do what he says. That's right. Do you understand that? It's simple, right?